Hello, today I'm here to review this little beauty and I'm going to talk about the hardware, the software and then a little bit of comments about what being open source actually means. So, number one, the hardware. Now, the Jink Pad actually comes in four pieces. The first one, which I'm going to talk right away, is the pen. How is the pen? I don't really know. And that's because it broke day one, which is really sad. I don't know how much of it is my fault. I don't think it took any uh, hit or drop. And I've also seen other people pointing out that their pen broke. So I think the pen is a bit fragile. I've used it one time and I found it to be more similar to um, Apple Pencil rather than a Samsung Pen. However, it wasn't quite there in terms of quality. Again, it was just one day and then it went away. The part number two, which I don't have here with me right now, is a cover without the keyboard, which is made of pig leather. And that one is really good and it also has a way to like a little space for the pen that attaches man magnetically just like the jink pad and also um, a little jink pad logo which is very nice to see. I don't know what uh, you should expect out of it except that it feels nice and that's surely it surely does that. There is the other uh, cover which is this one here. How is it? Super nice in the hand. It's a bit heavy. My girlfriend thinks that it's too heavy, but I think it's just fine. You, you might disagree with me, so you're warned. It's extremely, extremely well built. However, it also has a couple of flows. I'm going to pound, point out, sorry, the major flows in my opinion. And those are number one, the fact that on the back, you don't have rubber bands on both sides, which means that the one that hasn't will very easily deteriorate and get scratches, even if you always use the jink pad with uh, the keys open it still scratches while it's closed down so you need to be extra careful when you're bring it, bringing it around also the rubber, the rubber bands the existing ones do come off a bit easily i managed to get mine back as easily as it came off but that shouldn't have happened after like a couple of days also maybe the hinge is not very sturdy you can see the laptop if you touch it goes a bit on and on but except that, and I do think that those are not major issues, the keyboard is fine, you can actually type pretty fast on it. I managed to get 90 words per minute, and if you're not able to reach that, well, it's because of you. The touchpad is a bit small, but it feels fine, and that honestly wasn't uh, any sort of bottleneck to me when actually using the device. So let's talk about the device. Let me actually take it off. The device feels amazing, like very high quality. You've got a glass bag, metal on the sides, sorry, and uh, a very nice screen with small uh, bezels all around. Honestly, I have nothing to complain about the very device, the very tablet. You've got the volume buttons in the right position, a fingerprint reader to actually look in in the right position. However, as we'll uh, talk about that later, the fingerprint reader doesn't actually work. Good camera for what you would expect from a 2000 uh, USD tablet. This is not that price, so the camera is underwhelming. Anna, what do you think of this tablet? I don't want it. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, I'm done. And as far as speed goes, I can't really comment it on that because the Jinkpad doesn't come by default with hardware acceleration enabled. And I understand that because doing Linux hardware is not easy and especially if it's not easily main, mainline normal to not have such things I can understand that it's not very fast without it but it's not a deal breaker the YouTube videos will lag a bit and the whole use, uh, user interface won't feel snappy I don't think that's a bottleneck either in my opinion on the 
wire. So he's ready for this. That was his preparation. This is reference. It's board one, board two, and board three. And he has to keep track of all that in his... As far as Ram goes, storage, I also think those are very much not issues. Of course, you need to know what you're going to do with this. If you think that you'll be able to do any sort of uh, harder work, like, I don't know, video editing or picture editing with GIMP, if it's a large image, give up, like, don't do that. That won't happen, not on this device, but if you're buying this device to, I don't know, take notes, school work, that sort of stuff, which is very much my use case, the, those are not issues, but there are others. Let's talk about the software, because as I uh, see it currently, I think all of the issues of the Jigpad are software related. But as far as the hardware goes, the hardware is amazing, the software is not I'm sure you heard many reviews saying, yes, the software is kind of bad, you don't have X, you don't have Y, but they will come later, probably they will get updated and okay, but I do have something to say about that. If you're building a software and you send me a device with an alpha software, that's fine. Like, I can see the effort that, that you're putting in and when I reviewed the Jingo S first version, I understood that and I actually praised the operating system as it was because it was actually doing many things right and moving in the right direction. And that's fine. However, if you take something that is working, like if you're forking Plasma, that's, uh, plasma Mobile, whatever you're forking, something that is working, and then you build on top of that to improve it for your device, that's very much fine. But if the end result breaks something that was there before from the project that you forked originally, what are you doing? Like you're moving backwards. I'll make you a very easy example. So keyboard layout. So as you know, the ThinkPad has a keyboard and in all devices, you can change the keyboard layout, especially if you're planning on selling that thing internationally. The ThinkPad has no such option in the settings, but okay, I can, I can understand that. Like, it's not easy to do a full-fetched system setting application. If you look at the KDA Plasma one, it's gigantic. It would take years to redo it from scratch. So what did I do? I manually changed the keyboard layout from console and it doesn't work. And what's crazier than that is that it actually works, but only on Chrome and Firefox, whereas everything else stays with the uh, default keyboard layout. And that annoys me, because not only you're not giving an option to actually change the keyboard layout, but you actually did something like that broke changing the keyboard layout, because if I go into my terminal, type, I don't know, load case, the Vorak, the Vorak, as an example, it should work. And it's not just that. I'll make you another stupid example. Take the touchpad. Okay, you can take the touchpad and usually if you need to drag a folder from somewhere to somewhere else, you don't just do this on the touchpad, like click, click. Usually long click and then with the other finger, you drag around the folder because maybe uh, the touchpad is not long enough it's broken it doesn't work you cannot actually drag and drop or i don't know just select text using two fingers and that's a massive deal breaker how, how are you going to select more than like two lines of text with it if you need to select a paragraph which is such a basic use case it's broken you can't do that and it baffles me like it was working it should work on any computer and you actively do did something that broke it. Or another example, screen rotation. Okay, screen rotation is not supported. Okay, that's fine. I can actually do screen rotation manually through KDE settings. I've done it countless times on my computer, which is the Yoga and is also a touch screen. But on the Jigpad, it doesn't work and it actually makes it unusable. It took me like hours to get it back working and that shouldn't happen. Like, okay, another example, I've got plenty. Screen resolution, okay, screen resolution is hard. I'll say that by the way. It's hard to make all the apps use uh, a scaling factor without any screen artifacts, okay. However, 
if you do open any ThinkPad apps that are there by default, okay, they open up with the right uh, skill factor. But if you install any third party app, it will open up with the default one to one skill factor, which is way too small. Of course, there are ways to fix that and do like um, system flags uh, variables, sorry, to actually change uh, the scaling, the QT scaling. But what are you doing? You are indeed changing the scaling factor but only for your own apps how how are you how are you even doing that and why like what's the reason behind it it's it sounds like it would be easier to just use the qt scaling factor as it's currently implemented if you have a tablet and you can install the third party apps on it you shouldn't rely on the user actually fixing the resolution by themselves take global themes okay uh, Jinkpad is based heavily on Kurigami and QML. That's fine because uh, Kurigami is a product of ours, which is KDE, and it supports theming, so that's very nice. Jinkpad allows you to have a light and dark theme, which is nice, but in order to switch from one to another, you need to reboot the device, like shut it down and reboot. Why? Why? Okay, we, KDE, implemented schemes and it was working when we gave it to you and you broke it like applications shouldn't need a system restart for the color scheme to actually take effect it's so many of these small things that it's not like okay we need to work on that yes you do but they were working you didn't have to break them in the first place i think that is the major issue with the jinkpad it's not that it doesn't support that it's not that the you know, Android, uh, the Android uh, system is slow or doesn't function well. I don't care. Those things can be worked on, and uh, uh, it's clear that Jinkpad is doing great leaps forward in terms of, of actually fixing those kind of bugs. But and then there is open source. Okay, so if you're claiming your tablet is open source and they are doing so. What I expect is that everything that ships on that device is on some public repository and with the correct license. Okay, and Jinkpad kind of does that, but it's the kind of which is the issue. You can't be kind of in source. Well, you, you can, but it won't look very good. Okay, let me explain this. Okay, take the claim that uh, the Jinkpad can run Android applications with their own thing. Okay. That's a good feature. That feature is closed. It's not open source. If you're selling the tablet as open source and as a feature you have that it can run Android apps and the feature to run Android apps is not open source, it's not quite an open source tablet. It's, it's kind of open source. It's not open source. Like if you have a significant part of it, because let me say that actually being able to run Android application is a big deal for this kind of device. If you have such an important aspect of your tablet closed source and you're not planning to release the source code in any way, that's not going to be good, especially because they claim that it's their own solution and that uh, it's not Waydroid. You can install Waydroid on this machine, it will work very well and that's open source. So if you're an open source enthusiast, don't use, don't use Jinkpad and Word Thingy, use Waydroid because it works and it's open source. As far as we know, the Jinkpad uh, Android thingy could be Waydroid copy pasted, as far as we know. Now, if they open source it, we would know that it isn't. They claim it isn't, it's their own solution. But how do we know that? I guess we could look into like system files and see if there are any differences when installed, but that's not what you, we should be doing. And if you're asking why am I suspicious that the Jinkpad Android system could be Waydroid, okay, um, I'm not really, I do think that it is a different system. However, Jinkpad doesn't have a record of actually respecting GPL license very well. And let me explain that. As you know, if you fork someone's code and if it's under GPL, 
you are like you need to release the source code when you actually ship the device or uh, release your operating system that's like legally required you, you can't do you remember like trump okay this video is going to get demonetized never mind do you remember the that guy's uh, social network it was using mastodon and because they screwed up and actually accidentally said that it was based on Mastodon, Mastodon went up and said, okay, no, you have to release the source code of this, which they weren't. Jinkpad is based on KD, many KD Plasma or KD products and they modify them. And in theory, they should release uh, what modification they've made and they do months and months later, which doesn't look good at all because you can't just say like we are open source and then you check and you discover that they're violating the license and you ask uh, what's up with that and they answer oh yes uh, sure uh, we don't have the time to fix that but we will eventually like open source everything just give us six months okay okay they did they did they actually open source the latest version of the jing pad of the jing OS. But as soon as another version rolls out, how many months are we going to have to wait to have the new modifications on top of what was done before? Now, to, to be kind of open source, I think, is better than not being open source at all. And that's a fair point, and I do understand that they have a limited set of people that work on these things, is not that easy, especially to newcomers to this open source thing is. I think that Jingling, which is the company, is working on this and is working on this very actively. I think they're trying to honestly understand what open source is uh, as much as possible because it's easy for new companies to not fully grasp what's going on. Jingling is working on this, like, I so people trying to understand, making good questions, and that's very nice. However, I have to tell you that in this moment, they still have to work on this because there are still some issues with how they deal with open source. To work up hardware, I love it. I love the hardware. I think I would pay that price to have this if it run KD Plasma, which it doesn't. The software, it's okay. I don't want to bash it too much. It's a good start. It annoys me that they broke things that were working, but hopefully as soon as they fix them, well, I'll be happier. But I would be even happier if I could install any operating system on that thing and currently I can't. Is this useful? Should you buy it? If you care about open source, it might be an option. However, if you need a tablet to actually do work, this is not it. If you need a tablet to do work, set of application that only runs on Linux, okay, this might be your thing, but keep in mind that you're going to fight with the device to actually get things working in Europe. I, I've seen people saying, okay, I won't actually have to fight with the device because I'm going to install uh, ARM ARC on this thingy they want. Good luck with that. If you manage to, please tell me. Yes. There is an Android image and to install the Android image on the device you need to use Windows. There is, or there will be shortly, a Ubuntu Touch image, and that's very nice to hear. Uh, but when I asked, like, the, the person that actually worked with the Ubuntu Touch device, yeah, that could mean that you can install other desktop environments as flawlessly on the device, that's the worst thing. So I will do more videos talking about this exact device, but switching the software Hopefully, hopefully that will make uh, give me a better impression of the device because I am really love this hardware. But the software is there. I, I think that any reviews have a good that say that the software is there. Yeah. Okay, we all agree with that. So let's try something different and I'll keep you updated. Bye.
forgot everything. Well, if I forgot anything, I will add like a voiceover over like nice images. So I think the video cuts here.